Welcome to Kennedy Saves the World. It's Kennedy. Uh, the world is falling apart. There's political violence at both extremes, at least. And that means there is a bit of a clampdown. And I was not surprised to see former CIA director John Brennan go after libertarians because libertarians have had his number for some time when he was uh, the head of the world's biggest spy agency. He was illegally uh, torturing, torturing detainees and he was lying to Congress. He was perjuring himself left and right. He was lying to the public. He was killing civilians. He was doing a a lot of this and working very hard night and day to keep all of his nefarious activities secret. Libertarians like freedom. They like transparency. They like limited government. People like John Brennan want to conceal bad things the government is doing as much as possible. Uh, They want unlimited budgets and unlimited power with absolutely no checks. So it's no surprise that in order to frame what happened in the Capitol with the insurgency and the, the siege, that Brennan would try and very narrowly, uh, with no evidence, define who was a part of that. Now, I don't buy into the idea that Antifa was behind it. I think that's utter nonsense. Just like the way when I see violence in Seattle and Portland that sprung up on inauguration night, I don't think that's the Proud Boys. I I think it's pretty clear-cut what is happening here are people who are mentally unhinged, who want to very oppressively, with as much uh, authoritarianism as possible, upend the system and subvert people's views. That is very anti-liberty. Uh, John Brennan tried for a long time to keep the bad things that he did secret. He was rewarded with a, uh, a contract, a contributorship with NBC News. So on MSNBC, he said that libertarians are tantamount to religious extremists, authoritarians, fascist bigots, racists, and nativists. Uh, This is a person who clearly does not know the definition for the word libertarian. The thing I like about being a libertarian is I get to define what I mean, what it means to me, my politics, my parenting, and how I live. I tend to do as much of that as possible, as consistently as possible, uh, under the umbrella of freedom. I love freedom. I call it hot freedom because I think the freer you are, the hotter your life is. And that's not just superficial sexiness. That means that your life is full because you are making your own choices. People like John Brennan want to take your choices away from you, oftentimes by force. And now he is used as a talking head and an expert when he has really lost his mind. Now, if someone like George Papadopoulos can go to jail for process crimes, uh, John Brennan should be in jail for a lot longer for crimes that he has committed against actual human beings, including civilian deaths in drone strikes during the Obama administration. Now, in terms of libertarians being religious extremists, all John Brennan has to do is uh, attend a cocktail hour at the Cato Institute or at the Reason Foundation and circulate throughout the room and ask people their religious religious views because they'll they'll be pretty open about it. They're not commies like John Brennan. Uh, some of them are atheists, very proudly so. And and to them that's very consistent with libertarianism and self-comportment and having their own direction in their own life. Other people are theists. They believe in God. They believe in a natural law that is uh, above government and that is where we derive things like Uh, the ability to pursue our own happiness, whatever that may be. Authoritarianism. Libertarians are against authoritarianism. They are against the centralized control of uh, any, any state, any government body forcing you how to act or how to believe. Now, that means different things to different people. There are some people who are anarcho capitalist They believe in a free market system, uh, but don't think that the government should exist to apply its will, especially on a minority of voters and participants. Uh, libertarians are also not fascists, but it's very interesting because 
people who call themselves Antifa, which means anti-fascist, actually use very fascist techniques in order to do harm to people they disagree with politically and assert their will as much as possible, also limiting the freedom of association, which, you know, is very in its definition. And the way it flourishes, that in and of itself is very fascist. But it's interesting because the problem with narrowly defining one act of political violence is you completely ignore the other political violence that is happening simultaneously. I think that does a great disservice not only to society, uh, but also is incredibly dangerous and freedom killing. Don't go anywhere. More Kennedy saves the world right after this. So I condemned, obviously, what happened at the Capitol. That is absolutely wrong. You had elected lawmakers who were there performing a constitutional duty, and then you had wingnuts and crackpots and angry, violent people who were trying to break in and uh, oppressively stop what was going on because they disagreed with the outcome of an election. That is wrong. That is anti-freedom. In Seattle and Portland, you had people essentially doing the same thing, attacking federal property, uh, vandalizing, trying to hurt police officers, you know, and at the same time, harming innocent bystanders who no bystanders rather who no longer have the same freedom of association because they do not have freedom of movement in parts of any city that is being overrun with, quote unquote, anti fascists. So it's it's like. Trying to squash the coronavirus, which is great, and it's it's what we should be doing. That should be the focus of all of our resources so schools and the economy can open up again, so human beings can make money and have choices and exercise their own creativity and their own freedom in the way they see fit. That's what we want. But if you're only looking for coronavirus and all of a sudden um, – Ebola sneaks into the country and you are somehow trying to diminish that because you only want to focus on coronavirus, then you're going to see a lot of people die. And that's what's happening when people like John Brennan try and drive the conversation. Uh, This is a person who has lied repeatedly. I know a lot of people questioned Donald Trump's mental faculties throughout his presidency. I don't always think those questions were wrong. Uh, I think he had a a lot of expressions of, of something that was not right going on. And I see the same thing in John Brennan. But John Brennan will not go away. John Brennan has lied under oath. John Brennan does not get to define anyone in the conversation, certainly not libertarians. This is one of the most anti-liberty people we have seen in government in probably two generations. So when I see John Brennan railing against libertarians, I think that is absolutely laughable. And, you know, and and I feel the same way about people who are calling for the defund the police movement, which I disagree with. I think that we should have better training. I think we should have criminal justice reform. I think we should end no knock raids and limit qualified immunity. I believe all of those things. But you know what else? I also have family members who are cops and I've been on ride alongs. I've gone and I've seen how the police interact with uh, the people in the communities where they are policing. And sometimes it's really scary. Sometimes it's very boring. But for people who are driving the conversation, I guarantee you they have never spent time doing just that. And you should, because then you will have a fully informed opinion. I guarantee you that John Brennan has never read F.A. Hayek. And if he had, he he wouldn't have uh, voted for a communist to be president years ago. Does voting for a commie mean that you can't hold uh, some sort of directorship in the federal government? No, I, I don't care who you vote for, but certainly don't lecture me about liberty when you are the one who is trying to hide the facts about things like Abu Ghraib, when you were the one who was trying to black out a massive swaths of documentation in order to hide what your agency was doing, regardless of whether or not you were the head of it, because you want to make sure the same agency can do that very same thing again. It is so anti-liberty. It is so anti-constitutional. And uh, it is downright illegal. And I'm really fired up about this right now because 
libertarians are always, when it comes to two major parties and presidential politics, we always get the short end. For the full podcast, go to foxnewspodcast.com.